Hi everybody, John here. Uh, I'm going to do a video today showing how to add an analog signal uh, to one of the standard servos that we're using. So the idea here is a normal servo. We're just going to start with a normal servo package. Um, standard servo has, um, you know, three signals on it. It's got uh, the the dark signal here is ground, the red one is power, the yellow one is the um, pulse width modulated signal going to the servo to tell it what position to go to. Um, um, we're going to add though an extra, so right now basically position control on these servos is one directional, that is you send a signal to the servo on the yellow telling you what position to go to. The servo doesn't send any signal back telling you what position it's actually at, but there's a way to modify these servos um, to pull out a um, to pull out that analog signal that's used internally by the servo to control its position. We can pull that analog signal out and then we can measure that to tell what position the servo is in. Why is that useful? Um, if we turn off the signal, if we turn off the signal that's carried by this yellow wire, that's going to just let the servo just sort of just float around. It's going to let it, the servo is not going to strongly control its position at all if we do that. So what we can do is we can then move the servo position and by measuring that, by monitoring that signal coming off of it, we can tell what position we move the servo to. And the cool thing is um, if we, for instance, move a servo to a certain position, we can read that position using anything that can read that analog signal and then go back to it later on if we want. So. Um, so let's go through the process of um, of getting that analog signal out. So we start by taking the screws off of the back of this. You always want to make sure you're using the right screwdriver for the job here. I'm not sure this is the right screw. Yeah, this one will work. So. We're starting by just pulling these off here. Um, if you're doing the tiny servo, if you're doing the tiny servo, and we'll do a video on the tiny one later, you really want to make sure you're using the right screwdriver for that. So uh, basically, if you strip these screws, there's no really, there's no going back. Um, if you strip the screws, your options are basically to glue the housing together or um, or just you know get a get a new get a new screw, and they're not that easy to get always. So once we do that, one thing these servos, the screws hold them together. They hold the, these three pieces on. There's the top shell, the body shell, and then the back shell here. Um, so they're all right now loose. I can pull, I can pull all three of these apart. We don't really need to pull all three of them apart. If we pull the top off, it's possible we're going to start losing guts of this thing. So instead, what we're going to do is, oh, we're just going to pull the back off. And this is the high torque servo, by the way. This is the. Uh, Tower MG996R Digi High Torque Servo. These are about seven bucks for a 12, uh, 12 kilogram inch, um, or yeah, 12 kilogram inch, kind of a weird way of describing torque. Uh, pretty torquey servo though. So if you um, pull the back off, you can kind of pull the guts out of here a little bit, just gently kind of pop them out. Or some, sometimes they take a little more coaxing. Yeah, kind of stuck here. Okay, so what you're going to see inside this servo is a couple different things. So this is the DC motor that's used to to move the servo around. So it's, it's heavily geared. So this DC motor, there's a huge gear ratio between this and where the actual servo horn connects. Um, then inside here, you see down in there, I don't know if it'll focus on that, way down in there, there is a potentiometer in there. And so basically, as the servo rotates, as this end, as this control arm rotates, uh, this potentiometer basically forms a voltage divider, and it um, and it pulls that that it sort of as it twists, it changes that division on the voltage divider set by the potentiometer, um, and then. Uh, it's reading, it has a constant, about about a constant 2 volts across the voltage divider, so it's reading some fraction of that 2 volts on the center tap of that potentiometer to tell what position the servo is in. So all we're going to do is pull the signal off that center tap. You'll notice we have color-coded wires here inside here. There's, I don't know if the black shows up very well, but we have a, a red, black, and white wire here. Um, 
So in this case, the red is a, is a fixed two volt signal, a fixed two volt reference. The black is ground and the white is our signal that we're looking for. And if we look at this board, that white signal, right in here, it's kind of coated with this little goop. So that little goop is just kind of an adhesive to, to uh, um, it's, it, do, it does a couple of things. It does anti-vibration. It also prevents those terminals from shorting. Um, but so it's basically just a little s strip of a, of a little sealant they put on there after they make the solder joints. Um, but mostly it's to, it's for um, anti-vibration and electrical isolation. So wherever those solder points are, when you sandwich this thing back together, it's possible for those solder points to make electrical contact. This just kind of shields them. It's like a little liquid electrical tape they put on there. Uh, but we can actually grab, so right now this side is covered with goop. This side, if you look in there, uh, there's a lot of goop covering that solder connection. We're not going to solder there, but if we flip it, we can see this. that signal is right here on this center, this center bead here. So you see those three balls there? The center one is, um, is that signal we're trying to get. So what we're going to do is um, we're just going to solder um, a new wire to that little signal. And um, when we solder that new wire, we'll, we'll run it outside the body of the servo. And then we'll just have that, that little signal out there. So before we do that, there's a couple things we want to do. Um, this, this little grommet we have here that um, sort of protects the wires as they run outside the housing of the servo. If we want to get a fourth signal out here, we're going to have to widen this. So um, I'm gonna, let me really quickly get an X-Acto knife and I'm going to show you how, how I like to do this. Okay, so we've got an X-Acto knife. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just cut along the edge here. And I, I, it's not doing a great job of focusing here. But I'm just gonna cut a little, just really gently cut this along the edge here. Just until we get through. So we're not trying to carve it out. We're just trying to kind of split the edge of this little rubber grommet here not go so far that we cut that wire up so we gotta be really careful so it looks like one end is cut through okay so now we're through so now we've cut we've cut that that little rubber connector open so now it's just open there the next thing we're going to do is um, if you look back at this housing, this housing has a little notch in there and that notch is used to sort of let those wires get through. We need to widen this notch out a little bit. We need to just give a little bit more space here. That's going to give room for our fourth wire to come through here. Uh, and then we're just going to shove the wire in through that rubber grommet, through the split in that rubber grommet, and then it should fit in here. So not much. We're just going to just, just sort of shave a little bit off of that notch and we can just use the X-Acto knife for that. So just taking a little, just taking a little extra off here. So yeah, so we just widen it a little. We just wide, we just add a little extra room over here for that wire. Um, doesn't have to be a lot because it will kind of all cram in there. But just just adding a little bit of extra space for a wire. I don't know how well that shows up, but yeah, just a little bit wider. Okay. So now now that we're all prepped for once we get this thing soldered, um, it's pretty straightforward the actual soldering process. Um, we're gonna take. Um, so we want to make sure this length of wire, we want to make sure this analog wire is long enough to reach how far it needs to go. We can easily add servo extensions to extend this little three prong connector. But that fourth analog connector, um, it's, that's just, that wire needs to be as long as we need, otherwise we're going to have to sort of jerry-rig an extension on it. So just make sure, you know, measure whatever length you want it to be. We're going to cut it, um, and then we're just going to strip this end here, so we're going to 
strip just a little bit don't take too much strip a little bit off the end so we're just leaving a little bit of wire a little nubbin of wire exposed there now I always like to use flux so um, I'll just put a little dab of flux on there um, and then put a little dab of flux on this center connector so again we're trying to connect to the center prong here so just a little dab of flux there okay alrighty so now we are going to now we're going to get a little bit of solder on this on this wire so and I should be soldering over a soldering mat here but I don't have one right now so just get a little bit of solder on here So we got a little blob of solder on the end of that wire. Um, and now we're just going to, making sure the wire is in a direction that's going to be easy to feed this thing through. We're just going to set that wire here. And make a solder connection to that center terminal. Okay. So that wire is now soldered on there to that center terminal. And I really want to make sure you can see this before we sh shove it all back in. So let me just really quickly let me get the camera off here. Okay. So I don't know how well you can see that. Oh. That's good, okay. So yeah, see where that, see how that? Uh. Okay, well, it's not gonna wanna focus here. Do you want help? No, I got it. Okay, all right, you see that now? Yeah. So soldered on to that center. It's kind of the wire's kind of coming off in the right direction. We also make sure that that solder only hits that middle pad and it doesn't go to the other ones. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back, this camera back, and we'll finish this process here. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to stuff this all in here. So carefully, not not being too forceful here. We're going to get this board back in its, its housing. And this one the glue kind of extended a little too far so it's a little tough with this one with this particular one to get it in there actually I'm gonna have to shave off on this one I'm gonna have to shave a little glue off so okay so we're gonna shave a little glue Okay, well, all right, so shoving it back in here. That's probably good enough. Nope, it's not probably good enough. Man, this thing is just a pain.
Okay, there we go. Much better. Okay, so shove that guy back in there, and we want to we want to make sure this wire is stuffed in that in that little housing there, so we, or in that little grommet that we split. So we want to make sure that wire is stuffed in there as best we can. And then we're going to put the cap on. And when we put this cap on, it's just going to sandwich everything in there. And you see that wire is kind of coming out the side. Right? The, the grommet doesn't fully surround it, but it's just not space for that. But it does fit because we made room in that housing. And you see it's a very tight fit. But it does fit in that gap we made in the housing. Now all we have to do is put the four screws back in. And I like to get at least a couple in so this thing doesn't fall apart. Okay, and that's that. We now have a servo with a fourth feedback wire. Um, and probably what I would do now is solder a uh, pin connection on here so we could attach it to our breadboard. Um, and then we're good to go. All right, thanks for watching.